I was born and raised in East Harlem, in New York. Mount Sinai Hospital on 99th Street and 5th Avenue. I was raised in the 70s, early 80s. It was a very, very musical time, and I was in a neighborhood just, you know, uh, full of Latinos, and I was just proud of it. Where I was raised, it was in the projects, and I was always surrounded by music. Everybody played their, their own music out the windows. Everybody just had to sort of outdo the next apartment and put the speakers out, the facing out, you know what I mean? So you'd hear Hector Lavoe, you'd hear Juan Gabriel, you'd, you'd hear Gladys Knight and the Pips, and just everybody's taste. And um, it was like the melting pot of all kinds of music. And at home as well. My dad, he was a musician and couldn't practice it as much as he would have liked because he had three jobs, manual labor jobs, and worked hard. We were just always working, 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 working to put food on the table. It wasn't until when I was older that, that I could really understand and appreciate how frustrating that must have been. There was always music there. Felipe Rodriguez, Odilio Gonzalez, El Gallito de Manatí. And I had a group called uh, Grupo Villalba. My dad's friends would bring their own instruments, uh, bongos and pots and pans, and just all night. And as long as the beer was flowing, they wouldn't leave. He always wanted to sing. He wouldn't quit until we say, okay. He would get on the table and sing the only song he knew, El Solzar. That's the only song he knew. And I used to play in uh, small social clubs, and I used to take him. That's when he showed that he could sing. And all the ladies fell in love with that little kid. One day he got lost. I was playing in a place called uh, Echeverry. After he sang, he disappeared. I'm looking for my little boy, little boy. Where is my boy? He was down in the basement. A lot of old ladies there hugging him and kissing him. I think that's when he decided, oh, this is good, man. <laughs> I just wanted to be my dad. And here's this little three, four, five-year-old just imitating him and like, hi, oh, 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 she broke my heart. He's like, you're right. But, but, but it's just, it was, it, it was like just mimicking, you know, what, how the adults interpreted music. And, and um, I, was, I was raised around traditional, you know, uh, uh, Spanish music, and, 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 uh, which thank God, because I didn't even know that I was being wired for great music. When I first heard him, when he started singing, I, in New York, first time I heard him on the radio was a car went by, and I heard him singing, I couldn't believe this. But that's my son singing it. My little Tony, a big star. I'm everything my father taught me. That seed that my dad planted in me, I guess I become an ambassador of, of our culture and our music, and I'm proud of it. I feel excited every time I, I hear him. I mean, the excitement never dies. But one thing, though, when I go see his shows, I don't see Mark Anthony. Mark Anthony, to me, is, you know, something that came out later. I still see my little boy, Tony, singing. And it's very exciting. With all the passion I have for music, it's inconceivable to me to not be able to practice it. I can't believe he became such a big star. And, you know, it's very, very hard to grasp. He was just this hardworking man who sacrificed his dreams in order to provide for his family. In some interesting way, I guess, I got to fulfill my dreams because of his sacrifice. It freed me up to do what I needed to do because I knew that he was always going to take care of me. And now it's his turn. Mm -hmm.